Books are both objects and devices. They represent our interests while serving as doorways into imagination and memory. As objects, books give us beauty, voice, and access. As devices, they create worlds and encourage us to step outside ourselves. Hello, I'm Emily Moore, Assistant Curator of the Aramount Library. Today, we are going to delve into a book of abstracted longing. See si Je Mourrai Là-Bas. So uniting the words of a poet written during World War I with prints created by his friend almost 50 years later, this book connects creators across time while exploring universal themes of grief, friendship, and desire. Guillaume Apollinaire and Georges Braque met in pre-World War I Paris, decades before this book's publication. After arriving in Paris in 1900, Apollinaire met Braque, an artist who had trained in the family business of house painting and interior design. Together, the two men would embark on a period of creative experimentation, Apollinaire turning to writing and Brock engaging with painting and collage. There is, however, the presence of a third creator in this book, one whose influence is essential to this work. She is a person who becomes, through the obsession of Apollinaire, a persona. One Genevieve Marguerite Marie-Louise de Piole du Coligny, or as Apollinaire calls her, Lou. In addition to being the muse for the poetry in this tome, Lou lived a fascinating life of her own. She was one of the first female aviators in France and was once described by the painter André Louvier as a, quote, gracious and adventurous novice, frivolous and wild. For a brief period between 1914 and 1915, Lou shared an amour fou with Apollinaire, who by that point was serving on the front in World War I. Over the six months of their correspondence, Apollinaire sent her 220 letters and 76 poems, many of which were published after Apollinaire's 1918 death as Poèmes à Lou. It was from that collection that Brock, in 1962, selected the texts that appear in this book. Published just one year before the death of both Lou and Brock, this book serves as a testament to the relationships forged in Paris and on the front of World War I. Both Brock and Apollinaire suffered major injuries during the fighting. Brock received a head injury that left him temporarily blinded, while Apollinaire carried a shrapnel wound for the short remainder of his life. Brock pairs his selections with 17 woodcuts, an unusual choice of medium for the artist. These prints are quite different from the cubist canvases we typically think of with Brock. There is no simultaneous perspective, no flattening of space, and no nuance of light and angle. Rather, there is an emphasis on texture and structure, and his cool palette leaves room for the heady subject matter of the poetry. There is a sense of immediacy and privacy in these images, which include distilled still lives and the repetition of visual themes, including birds. He evokes the cubish practice of collage, with prints mimicking the look of torn paper. There is a sense of reflection and balance, complemented by strong outlines that are similar to his early Fauvist work. Calligrams, Apollinaire's poems of peace and war, were written simultaneous to his letters to Lou. Its 1918 publication introduced the world to concrete poetry, in which the layout and typeface of the words on the page are manipulated and choreographed to illustrate the meaning of the poetry itself. That same device is used here, as the letters of Lou's names are expanded to close the piece. La nuit descend, L, on y pressant, O, a long, a long distant de sang, you. We can understand the journey of the poetry in this book, from Apollinaire on the front, to Lou in France, and then finally to Brock in the 1960s, as an odyssey of desire and grief. The poetry is potent. It's filled with images of desire and lust, of violence and despair, and its intensity is balanced by the tenderness of Brock's imagery. The presence of his own memory of war and friendship is indicated by his dedication, in which he refers to Apollinaire as his companion in the trenches. In leafing through this book, one gets a sense of wrestling madness and a piece created through the balance of color, line, and negative space. As a device, then, this book is an act of final creativity of Apollinaire, who died in 1918, and of Brock, whose own passing occurred in 1963. Books can be objects of luxury and longing, they can provide entertainment while also bearing witness to trauma and loss. Si Jurure Laba, which translates to If I Die Over There, is a strikingly beautiful portal into the experience and suffering of three people separated by time and space, but still present in these pages. Thank you so much for taking a moment to reflect on another treasure from the Aramont Library. I hope you see us again soon.